Hey guys, Aaron Cybertron Zhang here, and today I'm back for some more competitive VGC style battles in Pokemon Brilliant Diamond and Shining Pearl. In my last video, I recreated the 2009 World Championship winning team, which I've linked down in the description below, and played a couple of games with it. So I'll just be playing a couple more matches with that team, which I've linked down as a pokey paste in the description below if you want to try it out yourselves. Note that the team is definitely not fully optimized in terms of its EV spreads, but I just wanted to stay true to the original material and get all the Pokemon and their moves uh, together in game. So yeah. Thank you so much as always for watching all of my content, especially the BDSP content. I hope you've been enjoying it. If you do, please share your support by leaving a like in the video. I'd really appreciate it. And question of the day, I'm curious how you would just generally improve BDSP, whether it be from the casual or the competitive side. I think for me, I know they tried to stay very true to the original games, but I really wish we had like an online ladder. Uh, it would just make things a lot more convenient. And if not, it would be interesting if you could have like multiple people in one union room, although I guess that would actually be uh, kind of difficult if you're using the same code as someone else and you're just trying to find that one person, but it would make finding matches a little bit easier. So those are my opinions, but let me know yours in the comment section below and let's get started. All right, our first game of the day, and we've got Kangaskhan, Latios, Arcanine, Togekiss, Nidoking, and Azumarill. Lots of cool stuff here. Togekiss plus Azumarill, I feel like we've seen a decent amount of recently. Kangaskhan has probably been the Pokemon that I have the worst uh, record against in BDSP. I feel like I have a sub 50% win rate against it, so hope we're going to get a win against it here. Um, one of the cool things here is that my opponent does not have any normal resistances or immunity, so Explosion and Self-Destruct here is incredibly powerful in my opinion. Honestly, Empoleon's pretty intriguing to me. Salamence's Intimidate, not really that valuable. I also have to worry about Ice Beam from Nidoking. I guess Nidoking can also Earth Power Empoleon, which isn't great. Hmm... Honestly, leading with self-destruct Metagross is pretty interesting here. Metagross and... I, I think Nidoking is probably the Pokemon I'm most worried about from their end. I'm actually intrigued by Metagross and Snorlax. This gives me double explosion potential right from the start. Empoleon in the back, I think. And then... Toxicroak's not bad against Kangaskhan. Kind of weakened to everything else. Ludi is pretty good thanks to Giga Drain into Azumarill and Hydro Pump into Arcanine, so yeah. My goal here is to at least get one Explosion or Self-Destruct off, ideally pick up two knockouts with them. I'm gonna go with Kangaskhan and Azumarill. Okay, I'm generally okay with that. What's tough for my opponent on turn one is who do you want to click Fake Out into? I'd Fake Out Snorlax. I want to just protect Snorlax and self-destruct so badly. I don't think it's a terrible play, but the issue is I guess if they fake out Metagross. What's my alternative? Just Meteor Mash? Could just Meteor Mash into Azumarill and Double Edge into it as well. That might be the slightly better line to take here, I think. They did fake out into Snorlax, so the play I was talking about could have worked. Hey, okay, Meteor Mash connects. I would guess it's a Belly Drum right now. That's a lot of damage from the Mash. Enough where now, like, Azumarill's basically going to get knocked out by one more hit, right? If they Belly Drum here. They're slower than Snorlax. Oh, interesting. Okay. Did not expect that. Uh, you would think Azumarill now would want to Aqua Jet. I would Aqua Jet the Metagross. Get switch in. Or in this position, we just go for Meteor Mash and Double Edge. I'm honestly okay with that as well. And Kangaskhan switches out. Oh, maybe into Togekiss? Yep. And they protect. Okay, that makes some sense to me. Um... But, what does this mean? I can just self-destruct. I'm gonna Meteor Mash here into Togekiss. Actually, I'd rather target Azumarill on the off chance Togekiss protects. And uh, just go for a self-destruct right now and try to look for a double knockout potentially. Yep, so there's Follow Me, okay. Main question is where's Aqua Jet from Azumarill going into? Oh, they're not even, wait, they're not Aqua Jetting. 
Okay, then I didn't necessarily need to self-destruct there, but I'm fine going for self-destruct because the assumption was that they would aqua jet into, um, they would aqua jet into my Metagross. Metagross would faint, and then self-destruct would knock out the Azumarill. So, not what I was expecting, but I'll take it. Okay. Now, I can bring in Empoleon or Ludicolo. We know that they've got Kangaskhan in the back. That's not super scary. Nidoking being their final one would make a lot of sense to me. So, would I rather bring out Ludi or Empoleon? I think Ludi... Well... Ludi gives me a fake out, I suppose. Yeah, I'll bring in Ludi, actually. And I expect Nidoking to be the final one, but let's see. If I, didn't, if I just went double edge there, I think the game was just over. But that's okay, I think self-destruct was the right play. Oh, it's Arcanine as their final one, okay. Uh, that bodes well given the Empoleon that we have in the back. I think that actually cleans things up pretty nicely for us. I could switch Metagross out into Empoleon here, but I think Empoleon's in pretty good position to just click Surf to end this game. So I'm fine just going for Meteor Mash here. On to Kangaskhan. You would think Kangaskhan here has to click Fake Out, right? Actually, hold on. If I were my opponent, what would I do? I would Fake Out into Ludicolo and just go for a Fire-type attack on a Metagross. So I actually think it is worth conserving Metagross. Uh, switching out into Empoleon here is fine. Um, and then I doubt I get the Rain Dance off, but if for some reason they don't click Fake Out into Ludicolo, then this is a potentially game-winning play. So let's see. We get Empoleon in. There's Fake Out. Yep, onto Ludi. So much damage. And it's just gonna be Flare Blitz. Okay. Ooh, Empoleon takes more than I would've liked there, but the reason I'm okay with this... Ludi flinches. Uh... Yeah, that was a lot of damage from Flare Blitz. Pretty impressive. Okay. I'm going to Protect now and then switch Ludi out into Metagross. They should go for a... Last Resort onto Ludi and a Flare Blitz onto Empoleon, I would think. Maybe it was better to just get the safe switch into Empoleon so then I can just Surf. Because I could probably survive a Flare Blitz into Final Gambit. Oh, it's close combat. Okay. Uh, and they do just last resort. Yeah. I've got explosion now. Does explosion win me the game? Like, what I want to do is switch into Ludicolo here. Ah, uh, I could Earthquake as well. See, I think what I want to go for here is let hope they don't protect. I bring in Ludicolo, explode, knock out Arcanine, and then um, we survive a last resort from Kangaskhan and Surf finishes it off. The alternative is to Earthquake, but the problem is if Earthquake does not pick up the KO. Okay, I'm down for Explosion. This is just a fun team. You don't really get to use Scarf Explosion very frequently, so let's give it a try. I'm gonna bring in Ludicolo to sacrifice it. They're not going to protect any Pokemon, so once again, that's good. We know Kangaskhan obviously does not have Protect. And hopefully that KO's Arcanine. Beautiful, okay. So now it's just a 1v1, and we know that their only attack on Kangaskhan is Last Resort. And my Empoleon's max HP, so I don't really expect them to be able to pick up a KO with Last Resort, but I guess we'll find out. And then I just click Surf here. Okay, so get Empoleon in. And no reason to go for anything inaccurate, Surf's always 100% accurate, so let's see if Empoleon can tank a last resort here. It survives with 3 HP. That was closer than I expected, honestly. I thought Empoleon would definitely survive that, but I was a little too close for comfort. So, yeah, I mean, obviously going for, like, Explosion and Self-Destruct is not exactly the most consistent strategy, but this matchup felt like we actually had a lot of opportunities for it, because, um... They, first of all, didn't have any normal resistances or any normal immunities, right? No Ghost-type Pokemon. And Kangaskhan is a Pokemon that doesn't really carry Protect very frequently. Uh, and then they had committed their Protect to turn with the Zoom Rail, so it was relatively safe to try to go for an explosion there. Uh, and so, yeah. I think the endgame is interesting where, for example, if I think... 
No, it's actually really risky to click Earthquake there, right? Because if I click Earthquake and then they end up knocking out Ludicolo, then I'm forced to Earthquake my own Empoleon, uh, thus, like, KOing it. So, yeah, I, I do like Explosion there, but obviously if they just protect the Arcanine there, I could lose the game. Um, so that's something you do have to consider very heavily when you're using Explosion or Self-Destruct. Like, all it takes is one Protect and suddenly, even if you're trading one for one, that's often not worth it. Um, I was a little bit surprised by the Resumero being slower than the Snorlax, but the Snorlax isn't min speed. I, um, it doesn't have any speed investment either, um, but they might be like min speed Azumaro. So yeah, either way though, that was a really, really close first game, but glad to get both Explosion and Self-Destruct off in the same game. So let's look for another one. All right, getting into this one and they have some pretty cool Pokemon. Luxray, Garchomp, Aerodactyl, Rapidash, Swellow, and Milotic. So, Aerodactyl is actually one of my favorite Pokemon. I used it a lot in VGC 2014, using like Rock Slide Tailwind with the Focus Sash set. Garchomp, you know, and Milotic have always been really good in VGC. And then Luxray got to shine a little bit in Sword and Shield, but more as like a gimmicky, like fun Pokemon rather than like super competitive. And Swallow and Rapidash have just never really seen much VGC play. So, once again, they don't have any normal resistances or immunities, so I like the idea of just exploding with both Metagross and Snorlax, but that's not the most consistent strategy, right? Once again, like I mentioned, all it takes is one Protect to throw you off substantially, so that's not something I should really rely on very much, in my opinion. I think Ludi is an incredibly effective sweeper in this one. They don't really have great water resistances or immunities either. I kind of just want to play with the Pokemon that we don't get to use as much. Um, okay, I'm down for a Ludi and Polion lead here, honestly, with Metagross and Snorlax. The only problem with this is I'm kind of weak to Garchomp, especially because I don't have Ice Beam on the uh, Ludicolo, but turn one, if they lead Garchomp, would be interesting because I can fake out into Icy Wind. Okay, it's going to be Swallow and Aerodactyl. Dual Flyings is actually kind of tricky for Ludicolo, but I don't know if... Um, Swallow actually really gets access to much to, or sorry, Aerodactyl gets much to like one shot Ludi here. Honestly, I'd rather turn one just go for a fake out into an Icy Wind, I think. Because I don't think Surf's KOing, I think their like Sash on Aerodactyl is likely. I guess I could f uh, fake out the Aerodactyl and Hydro it, but Swallow could just one shot Ludi. I don't love the idea of that. Okay, so get fake out off. Take some Life Orb Recoil. Yeah, they just rock slide. Okay, that's fine if we don't flinch here. If we flinch, that's pretty ugly. Crits us, that's fine. We're gonna flinch. Nice, and we avoid the flinch. Okay, well, well done, Empoleon. Oh my gosh, that almost just KO'd Swallow. <laughs> Was not expecting that, but I'll gladly take it. I wonder if they're Flame War plus Guts here. That would make the most sense. Yep, okay. Um... I don't know who's really faster here is the problem. I'd rather switch into Metagross to guarantee that I outspeed and then protect with Empoleon, because then I can just Rock Slide to pick up a double knockout right now. Whereas um, my Empoleon doesn't have any speed investment, so I am nervous about like Aerodactyl flinching my Ludicolo and then Swallow just KOing the Empoleon. This play feels a little bit more safe because I think even if Swallow goes for like a facade onto the Metagross switch in, well, Metagross doesn't really take that much damage from it because we resist it. Yeah, it's just going to be Aerial Ace. Okay, perfect. Yeah, I, I was just trying to play around a flinch there because I, I wasn't 100% sure that we'd outspeed Aerodactyl after the speed drop. Um, it's just been a long time since we've used like seen Ludi versus Aerodactyl, so the speed here is a little bit rusty with here. But Aerodactyl is so fast, uh, I, I didn't think we'd outspeed even at minus one. So I'm fine for Rock Slide here. I don't really want to Surf myself, so... Icy Wind also covers for any switch out options. Yeah, I'm fine with this. Okay, Rock Slide, nice. Double connects. I mean, the scary thing about clicking Rock Slide there is we can obviously miss, but we can also miss my other attacks in Meteor Mash. Earthquake obviously doesn't do anything, and I'm never clicking Explosion in this position. Okay, so that's double KO. And now we have a pretty good advantage. Empoleon was a really nice lead here. The main thing we had to watch out for was going to be the Garchomp. Okay, there's Rapidash and Milotic. Cool. So, Ludi's looking pretty good in this endgame. 
Uh, I can also just position myself for an explosion at this point. So I'm going to switch out into Snorlax here. Actually? Yeah, I think it still gets a switch. Going into Snorlax here. And honestly, I don't even mind surfing. One thing I didn't mention is that I actually shouldn't have Icy Winded last turn because my opponent could have switched in my Lodic and gotten a competitive boost. In fact, Icy Winding in general in this match was maybe a little bit risky. Because um, Milo with the competitive boost would actually be kind of annoying to deal with here. Okay, they're going to Flame Charge, but yeah, Rapidash unfortunately just isn't exactly the best Pokemon in VGC because it just doesn't have a very deep move pool and it's relatively frail, so... There's just a lot of other fire types that can often do what it wants to do, but better. Mirror Coat! Oh, that's actually really cool. Nice. Yeah, I feel like my opponent just didn't have too much damage, and we also had more bulk than them. So it's like when you have more bulk and more offense than your opponent, it's obviously really hard to win the game. Uh, at this point, Ludicolo wins the game by just coming in and getting a Grass Knot off, so just gonna look for the free switch and into it. Snorlax takes that Ice Beam like a champ. And I, I'm trying to surf the Snorlax to put it in Custap Barrier range so we can Custap Explode. And I think after Double Edge we should be in, in range. Oh, Double Edge actually almost just gets the knockout there. But yeah, now we're definitely in range. So, always fun to end the game with the Self-Destruct. And we'll just protect here. I think like this is a common case of like my opponent using some really cool Pokemon, right? Like Aerodactyl, um, the Swellow, the, the Rapidash. Like, they're all neat. Uh, the problem with Pokemon like... You know, Rapidash and Swellow those, that they're unfortunately just really, really frail. Um, and they often don't really deal enough damage to justify their usage in, like, a doubles format as well, right? So it's like, in Pokemon, you can always make any Pokemon work. And they were using, like, for example, the Swellow set I think makes a ton of sense. If you're trying to make Swellow work, that that's exactly the set I'd be running. Um, but it's tough for them because, as you can see, like, you know, they just took so much damage. And Pokemon... Yeah, it was really looking to just get, like, one big knockout. One, if you, you know, just blow an attack into a Protect, then I can just easily knock you out, right? So, yeah. Um, I think, if anything, Garchomp there would have been uh, made the matchup a lot harder for us, and the fact they didn't bring it made things easier for me, right? So, they had, if you have Garchomp over Rapidash, for example, then you can at least bring in Garchomp uh, to sweep later on, or Garchomp Aerodactyl lead with Milotic in the back and Swallow as the fourth, I think, could be really scary as well. Um, it's obviously hard to read into an Icy Wind, especially on turn one of the game, but like had they switched in my Lodic just on turn one immediately and I activated competitive, I actually would have been put in a really difficult spot. Um, and then like my Ludicolo would be my best answer to deal with the Milotic, but then they have Swellow and Aerodactyl, so it's like I'd have to KO both of those before dealing with Milotic. But since they had led both and they didn't switch in Milotic and we got the knockout on both, it just opened up a really easy end game for Ludicolo. But that game could have gone very differently if Milo just switches in on turn two. Um, and that second Icy Wind was a little bit careless on my end, so I don't love that. Um, so yeah, I think, you know, if, from my opponent's perspective, they could bring Garchomp, uh, they could switch in Milotic, and just those two small adjustments could actually drastically change the outcome of the game, but yeah, let's look for another one. Alright, I left the room and came back and it was actually the same opponent from the previous match, but they've got a completely different team, which is really cool. So, Crobat, Togekiss, Typhlosion, Torkoal, Sableye, and Feraligator. I'm gonna have to recreate the team that I used way back in VGC 2008. I don't even fully remember it, but it did feature a Typhlosion. It was like Icy Wind support from Vaporeon uh, with Typhlosion and Eruption. And so I actually have like a really, really fond uh, spot for Typhlosion here. So it's really cool to see my opponent using it. Uh, they do have a Sableye actually, which means I can't self-destruct or explode nearly as easily. Manual Rain Dance feels really powerful here, <laughs> but after seeing the Crobat, you know, I got taunted by a crowbat to prevent rain dance the last time i went against it went up against it so that might be a little bit tricky um i really like their team especially because i don't have great fire resistances or immunities maybe snorlax is decent here mm, i'm thinking salamence snorlax with ludi and empoleon the reason for this is, I think Snorlax here is going to be really bulky, so it's going to be relatively difficult for them to knock out. Salamence's goal is to primarily set up Rain Dance so that my Ludicolo can sweep in the late game. They're going to go with Togekiss and Typhlosion, okay. So I have to worry about Dazzling Gleam from Togekiss as well as just follow me. Now, my Snorlax does have Earthquake, which I actually feel like is pretty valuable for us here. Uh, Gleam is pretty scary, but I can obviously switch into Empoleon, but I don't want Typhlosion to just get a huge attack off. So turn one, I'm okay going for a Protect into an Earthquake. 
This way, on turn two, I'll feel a little bit better about potentially switching Salamence out into Empoleon. That's the play I'm looking for right now, but I think Snorlax is never in immediate danger of getting knocked out here on turn one. Yeah, they are just Eruption. I, I'm just curious if it was Choice Scarf Eruption or not. Okay, but Snorlax takes that pretty well. We only took 67 damage, and okay, Yawn, very nice. That is not a good move for us to see. But ultimately, I still feel pretty good about this turn one, right? I get a ton of damage off onto Typhlosion. I don't really take that much. Now Typhlosion can't really go for really anything as easily. Um, but the question now is, do I actually even want to switch out Salamence? Because they could just, you know, bait me with Yawn once again. It's actually tempting to just go for a Rain Dance. Or Draco here, honestly. Draco into Typhlosion and then switching Snorlax out into Empoleon doesn't seem terrible. And they switch Typhlosion out. Okay, that works for me. Into Crobat. Uh, Empoleon now is going to be in a really good spot going into this next turn. I can even just go for Rain Dance into Surf. I think the, the main tricky thing with my opponent being Yawn Togekiss is I don't have super good damage into it, so they can keep yawning every turn, essentially. And that makes the game harder for me. Uh, the reason I didn't Rain Dance there immediately, by the way, is because I was like, oh, well, they can just switch in Torko and change the weather, and so it'd be kind of a waste, and I didn't, given the lack of follow me on turn one, I felt like that was a good position to go for it. Uh, okay, they're gonna Gleam, that's fine. I think now what I can do is just Rain Dance. I wonder if, what their last Pokemon is. It being Torkoal does make some sense to me. Um, don't mind a Rain Dance here. Into a Surf, honestly. I think Salamence has accomplished what I've needed to if it gets the Rain Dance up. So the downside is that Crobat maybe just finishes it off with the Brave Bird. I don't know if Crobat gets the knockout because this is max HP Salamence. So we'll see. If it doesn't get the KO, great, I get Rain Dance up. I will probably knock my own Salamence out if they don't do it with the Dazzling Gleam from Togekiss, but then we set ourselves up for success because then I can just switch in Snorlax or Ludicolo. Um, the downside of Typhlosion is that it just doesn't do very much. Uh, okay, they're gonna Tailwind though, that's really strong into Gleam. This actually means I don't get Rain Dance up. And that could be a pretty big problem for me. That would have been a reason to go for it previously on the last turn. But I still feel pretty okay about my game stay because um, the thing I was going to say is that I think Typhlosion just lacks really good attacks outside of um, Eruption. Okay. So I think I'd rather bring Snorlax out first because Ludicolo is entirely too weak to Togekiss and it's going to be Frowlier. Very cool. Okay, so we know their final Pokemon's Typhlosion. Uh, the question here is, like, do I really need to self-destruct yet? Because I could get a double edge off first and then self-destruct. Problems if we're not in KO, uh, in range. I think I'd rather double edge for alligator here, protect, and then hopefully be in custap range and destruct next turn. Okay, for alligator protects. It's a strong option. Covering for a self-destruct uh, from my end, potentially, but this gives me... Okay, they yawn here. That's interesting. That's a really good play. Um, That's turn two of Tailwind. I think I just go for Destruct now, because you just protected. I'll, if we trade, then the endgame will be Ludi against Typhlosion. It could be Empoleon against Typhlosion as well, right? Because I could switch Empoleon out into Ludi right now. Um, I'd rather have Ludi, I think. Okay, uh, I will self-destruct here then. And go for... Surf is fine, can't miss. Covers for Typhlosion switching in. That's a greedy sword stance. Okay, I'll take it. But it's also a smart one, because I guess if I don't target for alligator there, I could just lose the game. And they're just going for another yawn. That's actually perfect, so no flinch chance even. This should just be a double knockout now, I think. Okay. And Snorlax is going to go boom. I, I it's This team is so fun with all the self-destructs and explosions. Like, it's just... 
it's so hard to play against, right? It, it, you have to remember, like, self-destructing explosion are even weaker than they used to be. So you, you can just imagine how this was able to, you know, win the World Championships way back in the day. Okay, so we know their final Pokemon's Typhlosion. Now Empoleon is going to fall asleep after this turn, which is obviously an issue for us. But I think I always just go for Fake Out here. I don't think Typhlosion can ever beat both of my Pokemon here. I'm just trying to think of every item combination it can have, but I'm fine going for Fake Out into Surf here. I think there's a decent chance this choice and it can't even protect here. And that it might be the case, they didn't protect. Um, but I think I'd always go for Fake Out because it's free chip damage anyway. If they have Protect and they go for it, then my, you know, Fake Out doesn't go up, then I don't take any chip damage, and I have 100% HP, Ludicolo, and an Empoleon lets that, you know, 40% lets us sleep against the Typhlosion. And I just don't think Typhlosion can do enough damage to either of our Pokemon quickly enough. Even if you're Specs and you outspeed Ludicolo, I don't even know if the Specs Fire Blast gets the KO. But that was a really cool team, and, you know, I'll give my opponent kudos, they... Have a lot of cool Pokemon that they tried out between the last two games and for Alligator, Typhlosion, uh, the uh, the Swellow in the first game, and the Rapidash. So yeah, I feel like you know we just generally had Pokemon that were stronger and made it easier for us to like make plays overall. But for Alligator with Swords Dance, really cool. Togekiss with Yong, really good support as well. Um, but the, the thing is like. You know, Tailwind going up for my opponent's end isn't as much of an issue. If we have so much bulk that we can just take all of their damage even with Tailwind up. And, like, generally we did more damage, but we were also bulkier. And that was kind of the same case as in that previous one. So, yeah. But it's been a fast couple ones, so I'll look for one final game here. Our last one here, and they have a very scary-looking team. Tyranitar, Raikou, Entei, Mamoswine, Crobat, and Latios. So the upside is the lack of self-destructor explosion like resistances other than Tyranitar, but we have a pretty good T-Tar matchup here, I'd argue. Salamence is awful here thanks to Latios and Mamoswine. Sorry, buddy. Um, I don't love the matchup here because they outpace me and they have a lot of damage. Like, ideally we get Rain Dance up, but that might not even help if Crobat just sets up a Tailwind. Maybe Metagross and Salamence is interesting here, right? Because it's like, I get an Intimidate off. Well, actually, Intimidate's not really that good here. Hmm. The only reason I'm thinking this is so that I can Rain Dance to then pivot into Ludicolo afterwards, but it doesn't really feel that strong. Toxicroak is pretty good into T-Tar and Mammoth, let's say. Maybe so it's some Polyon Metagross, I think. Ludi and Salamence, a uh, Snorlax. I just really don't like Salamence here. And I don't love Toxicroak either. I don't love Toxicroak because they have Sand and they have Crobat. Can't really do much against Crobat yet. They're gonna go Crobat and Entei. Okay, it's not a terrible lead here. The tricky thing is even if I lead Salamence here, right? Like they can just taunt me, uh, which is obviously really bad. Uh, you can just Tailwind here. I'm honestly kind of intrigued by the idea of a turn one explosion. I don't think it's a terrible idea. Uh, what would I alternatively do? I could like rock slide into surf. I also don't think that's terrible. I guess my problem is I don't know if explosion would one shot either of these Pokemon. And if it doesn't, I'd rather just rock slide. And here's the problem though. Yeah, because they're just max speed Crobat, I just get outsped. There's Sacred Fire, but they target Empoleon. Okay. Protect Explosion would have been pretty good turn one, but I think Surf might just get the knockout onto the Entei here. So it's honestly not terrible. I, I should have considered the fact yet, yeah, but I'm not outspeeding the Crobat there. And I do pick up a double KO, so like I can just theoretically end the game with the self-destruct from Snorlax right now. Uh, which would work. Or just switch Metagross out and explode with that. That also works. That turn one did not play how I expected it to, but it was wonderful for us. I'm sure they were reading into a Metagross Protector switch out, which I think is a very fair prediction to make. Hmm. I guess the problem is now I gotta deal with Mamoswine. And Raikou. Um, I could switch here.
Yeah, it's still pretty good for my opponent because they get Tailwind up and they have such strong Pokemon offensively against ours. Can they knock out both of my Pokemon here? High Horsepower into Metagross and just T-Bolt into Ludi? Okay, so I'm thinking we switch Metagross out into Ludi here. Or sorry, T-Bolt into Apollyon and then Protect. And then next turn I can Fake out into Lamamoswine. Uh, cause what I'm looking to do right now is stall out their Tailwind. If we stall out their Tailwind, then Fake Out can break Sash on Mammo, and then Meteor Mash can finish it off, ideally. Okay, nice T-Bolt. Oh, that's Specs or a crit? Ah, that's really bad. But maybe they doubled up into that slot. I'm not sure. A, a double layer would actually be pretty powerful into Metagross, especially if you know I'm choiced. I think that makes it... Well, it's, it's not over yet, actually, especially with Self-Destruct Wax. But... That crit, like, may not have mattered, because there's a decent chance my opponent just doubled up until a Metagross slot with Thunderbolt and Ice Cool Crash. Which would be a really nice play. Because it's like, if I don't get KO'd, then the Ice Cool Crash turns it off. If I do, it covers for a switch out, and if I stay in, then the Ice Cool Crash just gets redirected into Empoleon. So, it's a really solid play. Hey, I want to Earthquake here. And I guess Surf. I don't want to self-destruct yet, because I don't know if I can knock out either Pokemon. Okay, they're just going to T-Bolt into Empoleon. That works. Should I have double-edged instead? That may have been stronger, but the reason I wanted to Earthquake was to break a Sash. They're just going to Ice Cold Crash us, okay. Pretty good damage. Oh, it's because your life orb. Okay. Ah, and we flinch. Uh, that is probably going to be my doom then. I don't really see how I can get out of it. That uh, hurts. That hurts. Um, Makes sense for them to just T-Bolt Metagross. Bolt Metagross. Yeah, I needed that EQ. Um, I don't think I can win now. A little bit unfortunate RNG with the crit and the um, the flinch, but it happens. This is what happens when you get outsped by your opponent, right? And that, that's why I was so scared already. Like, they have Pokemon that are faster than ours, they can further increase their speed, and they have pretty good bulk overall as well. Not the best RNG, but, you know, can't complain. Um, actually, I think they, you know, played this end game with map like they brought really good pokemon uh, for example if they brought tyranitar um i think the game would have been a lot more difficult for them um i guess i can hope to survive a thunderbolt with metagross i could always go for a hill mary actually like protect explosion here because you just don't respect the metagross or you don't have enough speed investment somehow i have speed you think the choice scarf but that shouldn't be the case yeah they just correctly thunderbolt metagross here though and we get ko'd okay because, like, there was a scenario in which we can win that if they get, um, like, a little bit greedy and double up onto the Snorlax and don't respect my Metagross there. So, that's actually, like, you can always look for ways to win, even if it doesn't work out if your opponent plays optimally. Like, people often will mess up, right? So, yeah, they're just going to T-Bolt now. <laughs> I took a crash mischievous. I actually, um, could I have won the game with an Earthquake? Oh, and Self-Destruct actually doesn't get a KO there on either. But based off the tiebreaker rules, uh, we'd actually lose anyway, even if I picked up a double knockout there, because we faint first before they do. So, yeah, that was a fun one. I mean, I went for Self-Destruct because I didn't think there was any way to win there. If I had gone for Earthquake, we weren't even in Custap range, right? So then we would just get KO'd the subsequent turn. So, yeah, I mean, the, the main downside in that game was that I, you know, got crib with the Ludi on the switch in and then also got flinched. But... Even if both of those had gone our way, I'm not sure we had it in the bag. Um, I, it actually would have come down to how much Ice Gold Crash and whether or not they had Ice Shard as well. In my head, if I had gotten that Earthquake off, then I could have gone for another Earthquake with my Snorlax to pick up a KO onto the Raikou. If your Ice Gold Crash connects, I don't know if that knocks us out. It's close. I feel like the first Ice Gold Crash did do enough, but I'm not 100% sure. But... The hope is then that our cust app activates and then I can end the game off with uh, another Earthquake or a Double Edge potentially. So it's like two Earthquakes to KO the Raikou. That also chips away Mamoswine. Mamoswine will have taken two Earthquakes as well as two Life Orb ticks. And then hopefully it's in KO range from either a Double Edge or an EQ. But yeah, 
Um, even though we went up 4-2, that game highlights how strong, like, having good positioning and strong Pokemon can just sweep through in the end game can be, right? Um, Toxicroak would have been an interesting consideration there, just thanks to it having Focus Ash. I think the main problem here is that I lost Ludicolo for free, and Ludicolo was always going to offer me a free fake out onto the Anomalous Wine slot, so it would have been maybe more optimal to just stay in with Metagross and sacrifice it. But in my head, I was like, okay, if I can get Ludi in safely, I get a fake out off, then I'll actually have stalled out Tailwind. So I don't think that was a terrible line. Just curious if my opponent doubled up into the Metagross switch out or whether or not they just Ice Cold crashed the Empoleon. Because if they doubled up, then the crit doesn't even end up mattering at all. Um, so I'm curious about that. And yeah, they played really well and cool team overall. So. That's going to wrap it up for this episode. Thanks so much as always for watching. Leave a like if you enjoy. Don't forget to answer the question of the day, and I'll see you all soon. All right, peace.